whenever Satan and your own sin tempts you to serve him, to do some evil, to cheat, or lie, or steal, for some advantage, maybe just getting what you want, maybe just some pleasure, maybe to get something else, a job or some money, to impress other people, to control another person, doing it in an evil way, a manipulative way, a deceitful way, for the wrong motive, not for their good, but for something you want. Then when you do that, you are doing the same thing. You are following the devil to get some worldly benefit. It's the same temptation. Cheating, lying, and maybe a little thing. It's not the splendor of the whole world that you offer Jesus. But Jesus said, even the smallest of sins is as important as the biggest. These temptations come every day, and they must be resisted with God's strength and grace. And we all fail. We all fall short. But they can be defeated as Christ defeated the devil in the desert, in this vain world of ours. But then, when with God's help, you won over the devil. You've seen his tricks. And like Jesus, you've gotten around them. You've rebuked the devil. You haven't been fooled even when he cites scripture. You haven't been tempted and followed through on that temptation. When you win over the devil, God refreshes you. God will bless you, as it says in Matthew 4 and 11. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. How many times, my friends, after a horrible spiritual battle, after a horrible battle of sin, and triumphing by the grace of God, God sent angels. Sometimes actual angels to minister to you. Sometimes people coming. God sends people to bless you, to encourage you, to refresh you. Sometimes just a smile. Sometimes just a cup of water. Jesus said, if you give someone a cup of water in his name, Someone who's thirsty. Someone who's tired out from this battle with the devil. And you give them a cup of water. Or an encouraging word. Or a hug. Your arm around their shoulders. Just a smile. You are a ministering angel. And that's what we're to be. Looking for those who've gone through these struggles. Those who are fighting them right now and be a ministering angel to those in need and to receive them when we need them, as I have this past week. I've had ministering angels of friends, church members, strangers who have comforted me in my grief, who blessed ministering angels, dreams, when you're suffering, when you're struggling with grief or temptation or anger or anything, God will send ministering angels. The day I heard of my father's massive stroke, as I was heading out the door, heading out the house in the morning, and my sister called and said they found dad unconscious in his chair at home and he's unresponsive and they're rushing him to the hospital. And I was heading out to one of the busiest days of my life at the College Projects. We had planned for months. I told you about the 
involving dozens of people, involving thousands of dollars. Dozens of